Good morning, and welcome to morning prayer on this Tuesday, October 6th. Let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our first reading is from the beginning of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, of a priestly family in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin. The word of the Lord first came to him in the days of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign, and continued through the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, and until the downfall and exile of Jerusalem in the fifth months of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah. The word of the Lord came to me thus, thus, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I know not how you to speak. I am too young. But the Lord answered me, Say not, I am too young. To whoever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words in your mouth. This day I set you over nations and over kingdoms to root up fear. No, sorry. To root up and to tear down, to destroy and to demolish, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord came to me with the question, What do you see, Jeremiah? I see a branch of the watching tree, I replied. Then the Lord said to me, Well, have you seen? For I am watching to fulfill my word. A uh, second time, the word of the Lord came to me with the question, What do you see? I see a boiling cauldron, I replied, that appears from the north. And from the north, said the Lord to me, Evil will boil over upon all who dwell in the land. Lo, I am summoning all the kingdoms of the north, says the Lord. Each king shall come and set up his throne at the gateways of Jerusalem, opposite her walls all around and opposite all the cities of Judah. I will pronounce my sentence against them, for all their wickedness in forsaking me, and in burning incense to strange gods, and adoring their own handiwork. But do you gird your loins, stand up, and tell them all that I command you, but not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. And reading from a homily by St. John Chrysostom. Would you like me to list also the paths of repentance? They are numerous and quite varied, and all lead to heaven. A first path of repentance is a con condemnation of your own sins. Be the first to admit your sins, and you will be justified. For this reason, too, the prophet wrote, I said, I will accuse myself of my sins to the Lord, and you forgave the wickedness of my heart. Therefore, you too should condemn your own sins. That will be enough reason for the Lord to forgive you. For a man who condemns his own sins is slower to commit them again. Rouse your conscience to accuse you within your own house, lest it become your accuser before judgment seat of the Lord. That, then, is one very good path of repentance. Another, and no less valuable one, is to put, our, put out of our minds the harm done us by our enemies, in order to master our anger and to forgive our fellow servants' sins against us. Then our own sins against the Lord will be forgiven us. Thus you have another way to atone for sin. For if you forgive your debtors, your heavenly Father will forgive you. Do you want to know of a third path? 
It consists of prayer that is fervent, careful, and comes from the heart. If you want to hear of a fourth, I will mention almsgiving, whose power is great and far-reaching. If, moreover, a person lives a modest, humble life, that no less than the other things I have mentioned takes sin away. Proof of this is a tax collector who had no good deeds to mention, but offered his humility instead and was relieved of a heavy burden of sins. Thus I have shown you five paths of repentance, condemnation of your sins, forgiveness of our neighbor's sins against us, prayer, almsgiving, and humility. Do not be idle then, but walk daily in all these paths. They are easy, and you cannot plead your poverty. For, though you live out of your life in great need, amid great need, you can always set aside your wrath, be humble, pray diligently, and condemn your own sins. Poverty is no hindrance. Poverty is not an obstacle to our carrying out the Lord's bidding. Even when it comes to that path of repentance which involves giving money, almsgiving, I mean. The widow proved that when she put her two mites into the bowel box, now that we have learned how to heal these wounds of ours, let us apply the cures. Then, when we have regained a genuine health, we can approach the holy table with confidence. Go gloriously to meet Christ, the King of glory, and attain the eternal blessings through the grace, mercy, and kindness of Jesus Christ our Lord. Long ago God spoke to ancestors in many and various ways by the prophet. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by the Son. Let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome in adversity. And all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. We wish you all a blessed day and look forward to seeing you in the evening for evening prayer. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God.